Turn left on US 15. Anything you want to say before, uh... Um... Hey, it was a fun, short trip. But now we're going to go home to deal with no power because PG&E says there's a lot of wind and everybody said, no, it's not windy. Zero wind, they Zero said. Zero wind, but they shut off the power anyway. Good morning. How you doing? <laughs> we're we're uh, out of California for the moment, which Yahoo! is a good thing. Which is a very good thing. <laughs> Nevada State Beach, um, back over here, Lake Tahoe. So we're um, we're a couple miles outside of South Lake Tahoe, in Nevada. We're gonna go walk around the beach. Well, check out the beach from our rig. Turn it around. Did you? I just turn did. It around? Oh, I didn't even. See. <laughs> didn't you just? We did this. But how can they see it? Can they yeah. see? Can you see? Oh, okay, I just checking. Can see? <laughs> I can't see. Staying at this beautiful place. Well, there's place. nothing I could do. I mean, if, if Chuck asked me, there was nothing she could do. Staying here at this beautiful uh, place in Nevada. Uh, we're supposed to be here for another two nights, but PG&E uh, came along and said, "Ooh, there's a there's a huge weather emergency, and we're going to shut the power off." And that's exactly what they did. So, uh, went around, packed everything up, and we're gonna pull out of here because our, uh, yeah, I normally I'd say, yeah, we're not home, but we've got two freezers full of food and, uh, and the refrigerator, and we don't want it all to spoil and stink up the house. So, we're heading back this morning. My wife also runs a grocery store that is out of power, so she's got to get back to work now. Not fun. It is Tuesday, Wednesday, and I am uh, camping. But I'm camping in my front yard now. Uh, this is day one of the uh, of the great PG&E outage, and you can see that this is such severe weather. Look around me; it is so severe today that there's no wind blowing. So I got these two generators parked out here, and I have. I have my solar generator that's uh, running just nicely here and I've got that running I have that running the refrigerator inside anyway PG&E is saying uh, power is going to be out until Saturday at the, at the earliest they said, get ready for five to seven days of this because of the weather. Anyway, hey, the, uh, the one really, really good thing that this did was I, uh, I fired up my HF rig and I had like an S1, S2 noise level on 40 meters. Huge. What a, what a difference. So I know. It's uh, something, I don't know if it's here, 
because I've shut the power off here before and dropped it from you know my my S8 down to like an S6 but I've never got it down to an S1 around here so that tells me that something on these lines out here might be uh, might be my problem. Yeah, and the scary thing is, is this is just day one. Absolutely. Uh, they're saying it may be five days before they get stuff turned back on again. That's uh, really kind of uh, disturbing. All right, so let's fast forward for a second here. Right now it is uh, Saturday the 12th. And, um, okay, power came back on here Thursday evening, but there's still places that the power is still out. The big takeaways, uh, the big takeaways that I see of this are number one, uh, I got to play in zero noise land uh, right here at home where I've never had zero noise land, which was very, very cool. And it kind of gives me a new baseline to kind of start hunting my noise problems with. Number two, um, infrastructure. It took hours until the infrastructure literally came to a crawl here. Almost every internet provider was down uh, with the exception of AT&T DSL. The cell phones came down within hours uh, in affected areas. Battery backups did, did not last near long enough for an extended outage. Uh, ham radio repeaters all over the place, including some of the nodes from the Carla system, which is a big, big statewide system. Uh, they came down. Uh, again, battery backup was not sufficient for an extended outage. So really what this gives us is a baseline to go work from. And uh, mind you, there was no real emergency other than the threat of wind. It is 5.30 in the morning, <laughs> day two of the PG&E power outage. Staying in the motorhome. I'm headed up right now to the, uh, to the house. I've got a, got a generator going up here. Keep the refrigerators going. And I can also power up my ham shack. So this morning I figure, since there's nothing else to do at 5.30 in the morning and there's nobody around, I'm gonna go play a little HF and I'll show you guys how good the propagation is. Well, it's not great. Propagation's not good, but the uh, there's no noise, none. It's awesome. Come on. Okay, so. In the ham shack, I've got uh, got stuff powered up in here, just on the uh, from the generator outside, and uh, and I could play on here, hell as long as I want, 
or I could go set up a portable antenna out in the uh, out in the motorhome. But uh, this is almost kind of a treat for me to to hear uh, such good signal in here. I mean, just th this is just crazy. Look at the noise level. There's almost no noise. And I would actually be able to hear Look at that. Great, great noise level. Go down here to 7155. I never. I gotta say, I never ever get signals like this uh, up here at the house. I mean, I, there's usually just so much line noise and stuff going on from PG&E, and right now it's out. I mean, yeah, this sucks because I don't have any power in the house and it's freaking dark. But um, man, how cool is this? The ham shack is uh, is alive. I've been on uh, been on HF twenty over into uh, into the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Portland, all throughout the Pacific Northwest. I uh, I was uh, great signal operating the uh, K three at 50 watts think of this uh, as kind of a gift we had actual emergency conditions without an actual emergency there's eight takeaways that I really got out of this and I think if you live in California or you're uh, anywhere prone to this kind of thing happening you should take you should take these things away too number one this was a planned event pg&e sent out alerts um, one to two days ahead of this thing yet there was a ton of people who were caught just flat-footed and unprepared for this and when the uh, when the lights actually did go out it caused a major uh, major upheaval in their lives my advice uh, prepare early and stay prepared because a real emergency is gonna happen without warning and you won't have that you won't have that added time to gather up all your stuff and make preparations number two keep some food on hand I mean you know I know there's a lot of people that you know, basically they got a six-pack of beer and some hot dogs in the refrigerator and that's about it this is a perfect opportunity to learn from this uh, pick up some non-perishable foods some cans stuff that you can eat you know kind of on the go some mountain house whatever um, most of the grocery stores in the area had uh, had at least enough time to order up some generator trucks and those generator trucks kept those stores in business, but a lot of those things, a lot of the, the staples um, went quickly. There was little to no ice or dry ice to be found in the area. All right, number three. If you don't already own a generator, buy one. Uh, this planned outage from PG&E, it might have been the first one, but I don't think it's gonna be the last one. Uh, it sounds like this may become the uh, the new normal in California. Within hours of the power going out, uh, generators were basically non-existent in the stores. They had sold out and the prices were being inflated. What does this do? This makes generators a very attractive commodity uh, for the thieves. 
Which brings me to the next point is have enough gas on hand to get your generators started. And if you get the advanced warning like we did uh, for this event, go buy some gas well in advance, as far in advance as you possibly can. Gas stations in the area uh, were either out of power and couldn't pump gas, or uh, if they did have generator power, they had lines that w went around the block. I mean, it was crazy, and they soon ran out of gas. Even uh, gas stations in unaffected areas surrounding the affected areas ran out of gas and had huge, huge lines. Water. I can't stress the importance of having enough potable water, which means drinkable water, on hand. Now that uh, when times are good is the time to stock up on some bottled water. Whether you want to buy it in bottles, whether you want to bottle it yourself, whether you want to get you know a big 55 gallon drum to put your water in, store up water uh, and keep some on hand in case something like this happens. And if you get warning again for something, if you're on a well, remember if you don't have power, your well pump's not going to work. If you do have power but you're on city water, the city water may become contaminated or it just may get cut off for some reason, in which case you're out of water. So beforehand, fill up a bathtub, uh, fill up cans and jars. Remember, you're, you could survive without food for many days. You can only survive without water for up to three days. All right, security. I was almost shocked to find that most of my neighbors had pretty much abandoned their property at the onset of this thing. Uh, a lot of people went to go stay with relatives or friends down in areas that were not affected. And other than it made this place very, very quiet and very, um, very remote, it, uh, it kind of opened my eyes to the fact that this would be a perfect opportunity for thieves and looters to come into an area and have just virtually easy pickings. I mean, remember, you've got no electricity and no inhabitants, which means uh, for guys like me who elected to stay on my property, I was pretty much on my own. Uh, my security was my business and I had to take care of it. As, uh, as an event goes on in duration, as you know, the days keep adding up and we get into five, six, seven, eight days of, uh, of whatever emergency and whatever event, uh, people are going to become hungry, cranky, desperate, whatever, and they will do anything to feed themselves and take care of themselves, even if that means stealing from you. So protect all your stuff. Uh, one of the big things that I got out of this was the fact that I could hear generators running uh, in the area for probably, you know, a half, a half mile to a mile. And at night, that becomes a beacon going. to thieves. That People are there, they've got generators which are valuable, they've got fuel which is valuable. You don't want that stuff to get ripped off. So remember, uh, strategically use your generators. Don't, uh, don't use it 24 hours a day to keep the lights on because that's going to attract the thieves. I call that sound discipline. All right, I was also, uh, was also kind of shocked to see huge gas lines in unaffected areas. These are areas uh, nearby that still had full power, still had everything going because they were on a different grid system and they weren't on PG&E. But the gas lines at these places were just phenomenal. Uh, within hours of this happening, you know, people are already cranky and they're, they're waiting in line to get gas you know, I mean, sometimes for a half hour, 45 minutes, it was pretty eye-opening uh, that this would happen this quickly. As far as ham radio goes, uh, having a handheld and a mobile installed in a vehicle 
uh, is going to become extremely important and very, very handy. Uh, the, uh, the handheld is great if you've got repeaters on the air, but as repeaters drop off the air after the battery backups uh, go bad or, um, or, or they just can't stay on the air because there's no more power, you're going to find that simplex communication between you and whatever other stations is going to become more and more important. And the, the repeaters that do stay on the air, the smart ones like ours, went into a low power mode. They turned everything down to the lowest power so they would save the batteries and keep everything going, which means your handheld wouldn't get into a repeater like that and you need that simplex communication to uh, to stay in touch with friends, family, whatever and get news and information that really became very important um, as, the, as the hours went on in this, uh, in our event. I mean, imagine what is going to happen uh, when something like this when something like this occurs and it goes on for a week or more where you've got extended places with power outages and or you've got actual uh, emergency conditions with a disaster I mean just imagine that anyway guys I hope this was uh, I hope this video was helpful to you uh, this was my experience during the great PG&E blackout and uh, please leave a comment in the uh, in the section below and if you haven't already hit the subscribe button please hit the subscribe uh, like this video and share it wherever you can uh, that's all I got I'm Bob K6UDA and I'm out of here 7-3